Hey everyone, and welcome back to Code Mac. Today, we re-diving deep into a tiny but mighty component that has a huge impact on your car's fuel economy and performance, the oxygen sensor. You might have heard of it. Maybe a mechanic mentioned it. Or perhaps you've seen a check engine light code related to it. But what does it actually do? And how does it control how much fuel your car is using? Let's get under the hood and find out. First things first, where is this sensor? Most modern cars have at least two. There's one upstream, located in the exhaust manifold before the catalytic converter, and one downstream, located after the converter. The upstream sensor is the star of our show today when it comes to fuel economy. Its job is simple but critical. It sniffs the exhaust gases coming out of your engine and measures the amount of unburned oxygen. Think of it as a quality control inspector for your engine's combustion process. After your engine burns the air-fuel mixture, this sensor checks the leftovers. Why? Because the amount of oxygen left in the exhaust tells the engine's computer. Orisiu. Whether the mix was too rich meaning too much fuel and not enough air, or too lean meaning too much air and not enough fuel. The ideal air-to-fuel ratio for a gasoline engine is about 14.7 parts air to one part fuel. This is called the stoichiometric ratio. When the engine is running at this ratio, combustion is most efficient, and your catalytic converter works best to clean up the emissions. The upstream oxygen sensor constantly monitors the exhaust and sends a voltage signal back to the ECU. A high voltage signal means there's very little oxygen in the exhaust, indicating a rich mixture. When the ECU sees this, it says, whoa, too much gas, and immediately reduces the amount of fuel being injected into the cylinders. Conversely, a low voltage signal means there's a lot of oxygen, indicating a lean mixture. The ECU then responds by saying, not enough fuel, and increases the injection amount. This creates a rapid feedback loop. The ECU is constantly making tiny, split-second adjustments to the fuel injectors based on the oxygen sensor's readings, always trying to keep that perfect 14.7 to 1 ratio. This continuous fine-tuning is what we call closed-loop operation. It ensures your engine is running as efficiently as possible, squeezing the most power out of every drop of fuel. So, what happens when an oxygen sensor starts to fail? Over time, they can get contaminated by carbon, oil, or coolant, or they can just wear out. A failing sensor becomes slow and lazy. It doesn't react as quickly to changes in the exhaust. Instead of sending fast, accurate signals, it might send slow, weak, or even incorrect information to the EC. If the sensor is stuck sending a lean signal, the ECU will keep adding more and more fuel, thinking the engine is starving. This leads to a rich condition, which absolutely destroys your fuel economy. You'll notice your gas mileage dropping significantly, and you might even smell unburned fuel from the exhaust. Your spark plugs can get fouled, and the excess fuel can eventually damage your expensive catalytic converter. On the other hand, if the sensor gets stuck on a rich signal, the ECU will cut back on fuel, creating a lean condition. This can cause hesitation, misfires, a rough idle, and poor engine performance. In either case, a bad sensor throws that perfect air-fuel balance completely out of whack. This is why a check engine light for a faulty oxygen sensor should never be ignored. It's not just an emissions issue. It has a direct attack on your wallet at the gas pump and can lead to more costly repairs down the road. Replacing a bad oxygen sensor is often a straightforward job, and the money you save on fuel can quickly pay for the new part. So, that little sensor is a key player in a sophisticated system, working tirelessly to make your car run efficiently. It's the brain's most trusted advisor for fuel control. If you've been experiencing poor gas mileage, it's definitely worth checking the health of your oxygen sensors. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps you understand your car a little better. If you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to Code Mechanic for more deep dives into how your car works. Drop any questions you have in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one.